Then we had a great segment. Byron had to sit down with Seth Rollins, ask what his plans are for the world title. So Seth says, well, you know, you know, Finn's on the list, but so is Drew McIntyre, and he's rattling off these, these names, and in walks Finn. And so Seth says, you know, we got to call an end to this thing. i got to talk to this guy. So Finn says, I want my rematch. I don't care how many other contenders there are. The line starts with me. And so Seth says, listen, I understand where you're coming from, but you got to stop living in the past. Finn says, I'm not living in the past. I'm living, I'm living in chaos. I'm going to take that title. I'm going to do to you what you did to me. I'm going to hurt you. I'm going to laugh in your face. I'm going to take your career and alter it forever. And Seth says, this title is about more than me and you and your personal vendetta. It's like, if this is just about a vendetta, like we don't need to do a title match. We can just do it right here. So either take your shot or get out of my face. And so Finn says, that's cool. And he stands up and he leaves. And Seth starts apologizing to everybody for the interview being uh, interrupted. And all of a sudden, this chair flies in, whacks Seth Rollins. Finn comes in, beats the hell out of this guy, and he screams at him to make the match. And so uh, it is official. It is mm-hmm. Finn Balor and Seth Rollins at SummerSlam. thought this segment was great. thought That's these guys good. were awesome. Yeah. Yeah, very good. Very good. Then we had the Alpha Academy and the Viking Raiders. It was a Viking rules match. Falls count anywhere anything goes. They uh, they changed the set so the ring is basically a uh, a Viking ship. And, uh, you know, at the beginning, it's just kind of goofy. There's smoke everywhere, and they're, you know, doing stuff on this boat. But then, after the break, this match got so much fun. So I, first, I, really, li- I really like the match. Ivar, Ivar hits this big moonsault on Otis. Goes for the cover. Chad moonsaults onto the guy that did the moonsault and breaks it up. He then hits this giant German on Ivar. And then Titus O'Neil's on commentary. He's losing his mind. So Valhalla gets involved. Maxine goes after her. Hits a crossbody off the top. Chad celebrates. He puts the Letterman's jacket on her, but Valhalla spears her through a table in the corner. And then Chad's all concerned. He gets thrown through a shield in the corner. So now Otis is actually by himself against two men. He makes a one-man comeback. He's beating these dudes up. He's throwing them all over the place. He hits the caterpillar. The place goes crazy. He goes up top, but Valhalla clobbers him. Raiders hit a double powerbomb. They pin him. This was a fun match. Yeah, this was a lot of fun. Yes. Good match. Good match. Very, very good payoff to this thing. We had Shayna beating Nikki immediately. And then yeah, Ronda showed like up in the 19 crowd. Nineteen seconds. Yeah, my God, this this Ronda promo. This so this was this was so last week, last week Ronda's the baby face. This week she is very clearly yes. the heel, and Shane is very clearly the baby face. Right. Yeah. I. It's like it's like do they like do a thing where every week we have to switch this? Well, if they do it again next week, the answer is yes. Yeah. Or maybe we just didn't get what they were trying to do. But I think that Shane is always supposed to have been the baby face in this scenario. But last week, Ronda was totally presented as the baby face. Well, and when she came out here, when she started, the, she did. She started out as a baby face. Well, she did a uh, thing where she was basically in the crowd. And so yeah. anytime you're and the in the crowd, crowd, the crowd, yeah, the crowd was kind of cheering for her. Well, they were cheering for her at first. And then she did the line about being like the greatest of all time. And then they turned on her at that point. And... Um, you know, but when she was doing the whole thing about how, like, uh, you know, you said, you know, I had to come in here and and uh, you know start with very little training and all that. They were they were behind her, and then when she, you know, I'm the greatest, whatever it was, combat sports athlete or whatever. Then they turned on her, and then Shane it totally became a baby face, and then the crowd kind of went with that. But it's been uh, it's been a really weird build because you know the original angle, Shane was the heel. Then on TV, Shane was the baby face. Then the next week, Ronda was the baby face. And now this week, Shane is the baby face again. Well, they uh, Ronda challenged her. She said, uh, well, the, the, Ronda said about a thousand words in 30 seconds. But the gist was, Shana, you are a low-level ripoff of me. And then Shana says, I'm a better Ronda Rousey than you are. And so Ronda says. At, at pro wrestling, not at everything else. And Shana goes, why don't you waltz your ass down here? We can handle this. And Ronda said, it's not happening. Unless you want to make me. So Shana wants to make her. She starts going up there, and then Ronda grabs Mike and says, I'm going to do you a favor. I'm going to get you booked somewhere you could never get booked before. That's SummerSlam. I'll see you in Motor City, bitch. So there's another one official for mm-hmm. SummerSlam. Rick Shea promo calls out Logan Paul for the show next week and vows to hurt him where it will really hurt his ego. 
Yeah, so they'll make that match next week too, most likely. At Miz TV with Becky, where Miz is now proclaiming that he is a winner. He won his first match in uh, 2023. So Becky comes out, and uh, Miz wants to know if she lost a step, and of course she cuts a promo on him about not losing a step and says, I know how this show works. Why don't you just call Trish out? I know she's coming out anyway. So Miz says, all right, well, you know, I did have a surprise. Here comes Zoe and Trish, and so they come down to the ring, and it starts out with Trish just saying, we're not going to fight. I already beat you. Zoe beat you. Like, we're done with you. We've beaten you. You're not getting another shot. And so Becky still wants the match. She calls her a self-centered psychopath. Says, you attacked me when I was at my weakest because you couldn't attack me when I was at my strongest. I don't owe you nothing. You're not the best. But you know what? If you want to prove it, you can face me one-on-one. So Trish says, all right, well, I'll fight you under three conditions. First, he says, or she says, you got to go through Zoe first. You haven't beaten her yet. So it's next week's show. Becky said, fine. And then she says, uh, when Zoe beats you, you need to get on your knees and say, thank you, Trish. Becky says, fine. And then Trish says, one more thing. As a reminder to you and everyone here, when you lose to Zoe next week, you must tattoo, thank you, Trish, across your chest. And Becky agrees. Brawl breaks out. Becky ends up clearing the ring, takes the mask off Trish, punches her, puts the mask on, hits Zoe with a headbutt. So uh, it's a good angle. It's a good angle. I don't think anyone on the planet believes that Zoe is going to beat Becky and she'll get Thank You Trish tattooed on her chest. But hey, they've added something to that match next week. Bronson versus Nakamura. Match was good. Finish was horrible. Bronson just got attacked by Ciampa for the DQ. Which yeah, made the, the the finish made the finish made sense to where they're going though. Nakamura's furious. Nakamura going heel on Ch- with Champa, you know that's the that's the direction. So yeah. Weren't they going to do like uh, Gargana and Champa back together again as like a babyface tag team? They did tease that at one. Yes, point. they did. And what? So Gargano disappeared. Gargano and, disappeared. Remember they can, were doing the Nikki Cross and Candice thing. That's just vanished. Yeah, that vanished too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And now Candace Nakamura. Dis- and, Candace disappeared. Yep. So Nakamura's in the back, and and uh, Byron wants to know what the what's going on. He goes, "I'm tired of get everyone getting involved in my business." Byron says, "Well, what about what you did to Champa?" And Nakamura's like, "Byron, I'm tired of people getting my business." So apparently, he's either turning heel or he just hates Byron. Could yeah, be both. I, I felt that was a heel. That, that's the beginning of a heel turn. Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn versus Dom and Priest for the tag team titles. So Seth Rollins flies in before the match. He attacks Finn. So they they brawl backstage. Does a tope, and yeah, and all that. That was really well done. Never see him again. So uh, match itself, I mean, this match ended up being a great main event. Last few minutes were awesome. Crowd was very into it. Very, very into it. KO and Sammy hit these double dives to the outside, but then Rhea throws Kevin into the steps. Sammy gets sent into the buckle. Dom rolls him up, but he kicks out. Rhea jumps up on the apron. Liv runs down. They brawl for a while. And then Sammy hits Dom with the exploder in the corner. Kevin hits a stunner on Priest. Sammy hits the kick on Dom, gets the pin. This crowd was going crazy for this match by the end. And uh, it was a great match. And Owens and Sammy retain the titles. And I don't know what this means for Dom and Wesley tomorrow night. Maybe he's actually going to win that title for a while. I don't, I don't think it means anything. They're going to do whatever they're going to do. Yeah. Um, I mean, they could put Dom over. I mean, like, the angle, the way they've done it, seems to indicate Wesley against um, Ali, you know. For that the, is definitely where they appear to be going. Yeah, but they could they could put Dom in there. I mean, you know, I don't, I don't know. We'll see. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, as noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, 
Full access to the Wrestling Observer Newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. You also get Observer archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.